Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of the first video that I did the other month, so maybe worth having a look at that if you haven't seen it. Uh, this time I've tried a, another circuit, I've built up this one uh, and tested it, uh, which is so basically, as I say, is trying to fire a magnetron using um, a, a MOSFETs. Uh, to switch a high voltage, but by doing by adding them in a, in a link, a, ch a chain link here, uh, in order to achieve the appropriate breakdown voltage. Uh, these are fed from a resistor divider chain here and capacitors on the gates. But the th it was switching, but there was a high high resistance internally, so I suspect possibly the 10k was too high. But I decided to abandon this circuit and try another one uh, to see if we could improve the switching to try and get this resistance down as low as possible. Uh, it's possible I could have changed these resistors, it might have worked, but I thought rather than do that, I'll just go for a slightly more complicated circuit that I know works, what's going on, uh, and try this one. So this, I've now built this up. This is now, the problem made this more complex is that every stage requires a power supply for the gate driver. And uh, that means you have to have, well, I've got one, two, three, four separate power supplies, each one insulated from the other by at least uh, one and a half kV. Uh, so that was a little bit tricky, uh, but with that uh, in place, this should work a bit better. And this is the result. So we have again five stages here uh, with the silicon carbide MOSFETs and uh, the driver circuits for them. Still using the uh, same optocoupler as before, but this time we have each of these wires are bringing in a separate low voltage supply from this transformer. So this is our uh, heater transformer for the magnetron, which I'm still taking a connection from, but I have these added uh, five low voltage inputs, uh, which are rectified on the board here. I'm just going to measure the resistance of, for the switching, because that was obviously the problem with the last setup. This is the set of auto ranging. I know I was jumping around just now. The, uh, if I connect the supply up to operate now, I've operated the gates, it's showing th about 13 ohms. That's a little bit higher than expected. Each of these should be about 0.8 ohms each, um, but there are resistances in the cables as well. So it's not, not too far away from being uh, at its kind of what I expect. We still have uh, a resistance when nothing is, uh, when the switch is closed because we have a resistor divider to balance the voltage across the devices still. Got the magnetron hooked in and I'm just taking the uh, voltage, I'm switching voltage up to 5.5 kV and I'm going to pulse the magnetron now. We instantly get a reading and we crash that meter, but I don't have enough energy to flash the neon tube in front of the magnetron. Got the setup again. Now this time I've had another little setback on the tests with this circuit. First time I was trying to just check to the, that it would take up to 6 kV because that's where I was trying to head for. Uh, it failed at 5.5, so rather than scrap the whole idea, I've put new devices in here. So. So we're going through a lot, a lot of these, um, but we've got a new set. The problem is that when one goes, they all go. It's a cascade problem, and uh, but uh, replaced and ready to go. This time I've measured the through resistance. It's 11 ohms. It's not too bad. Uh, the setup here. This is going to display the the voltage on the cathode. So it's a negative voltage which is floating and uh, that's controlled by the switch and our anode is the ground on the uh, magnetron itself. I have a, a small aerial at the back of it which is hooked up to the oscilloscope and this is the trigger pulses are generated here so I've got that on the other side of the scope so we can see what goes in and comes out of the system. There's also a balanced resistor here that's just to limit the current. The magnetron itself has a, a, a presents a resistance but uh, I've added a, a 1k here just in case the, with discharging this capacitor we could in theory have quite a high current and that actually risks the MOSFETs as well. I think it's over there rated about 4 amps. Uh, okay. Voltage sitting on this capacitor at about 1 kV at the moment. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Um, 
I'll take it the magnetron really doesn't start working till almost 4 kV so I think we're fairly okay to take it to pretty close to that. There's 4 kV, kind of tricky to find it because of the capacitor there it takes a little bit of adjusting. So there's 4 kV. We should be okay at that. So if I fire the device See if I can trigger this. Single trigger. 